What's up, people? You're watching Cartel TV, and I'm Jenny. Is it a cruise? Is it an Astra? Is it German, Australian, or Korean? Well, it's kind of all of those things. But here, we call it the Holden Astra sedan. It's the latest version of the passenger car from Holden, with different names and features in different markets, but equally enduring in all of them. This is a sedan in the highest LTZ trim. Now, is it as widely appealing as it is widely spread? Hmm. On the design front, the Astra sedan is not bland, but also not spectacular. Every part looks okay, but nothing draws attention in either a good or a bad way. It pretty much looks like any attempt on a mid-range small sedan, with ascending window line adding to aggression, but ultimately fails to make much of an impression. The front is similar. The falling hood and cool headlights harmonize well with the grill, while the lower part has more intakes than this car really needs, also adding to the aggressive design. All in all, the outside has the typical current design language, on the verge of being outdated. This is the last generation that will be appealing with this design. The engine is a 1.4 litre turbo with 110 kilowatts and 240 newton meters from 2000 revs, which has quite a usable rev range, especially in this class. The engine is paired with a six speed automatic in this car. The manual is only available in the bottom trim level and it has six speeds as well. Average fuel consumption is officially listed at 6.1 litres per 100 kilometres. My lead foot is getting eight. The power figure may not seem like much, and frankly, it isn't. The new Astra is about 100 kilos lighter than the previous Cruise, and the new 1.4 litre turbo provides adequate driving performance. As for its suspension, the Astra is one of those cars that has a dedicated setup for Australia, and it shows. Speaking of comfort, I have to say how good the Astra is for long journeys. Gear changes are smooth, peaceful, and well-timed. I have a feeling the gearbox is tuned to improve consumption because it often shifts quite early. But if you press the pedal harder, it will listen to you and keep the gear lower for longer. The interior of the sedan differs a lot from the hatch and it's not just the design. Expectedly, the materials fit and finish are just not as good as in the more expensive European hatch version. And the price difference shows. Once again, more of a cruise than an Astra. This being said, if we don't compare it to the hatch, the interior of the sedan is good enough. It is spacious for this class. It's well-designed, modern, ergonomical, and relatively simplistic, making it user-friendly. MyLink infotainment is handy, and the 8-inch screen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto does a great job. A while back in her review of the Cascada, Simone pointed out this little ledge thing above the infotainment system. Ah, it just gets in the way. It's unnecessary, in my opinion. Even though this version is top of the range, the seats are still only manually adjustable. At least they're heated. Chrome details are cool and give a touch of premium. It's nice to feel a bit classy, Astra. Controls behind the wheel are a great idea and they help reduce clutter while keeping all the functionality at your fingertips. Back seats are really comfortable and legroom is impressive for this class. This is really a strong point. There are no rear vents, but there is a rear 12 volt charger Handy if you want to bring your own air conditioner. The boot is 445 litres, which is definitely substantial enough. Wait a minute. A closer inspection shows this car for what it really is. A cheaper version. Exposed metal, not much versatility, and non-flat folding rear seats kind of diminish the attempt of a premium feel, but at least remain somewhat functional. There is no AEB, even though it is standard in most competitors. On this star AEB. However, the car still has a five-star in-cap rating with blind spot alert, auto headlights, high beam assist, park assist, lane keep assist, collision warning system with a flashing sign on the windscreen, and a sound warning and six airbags. Overlook the lack of AEB, and this top spec Astra sedan is a safe bet for its class. If you love the Astra hatch, but want a sedan, this is not your car. The hatch is just on a higher level. This one packs fewer safety perks, the interior is different, and the more powerful engine option is not available. This top-of-the-line LTZ sedan is priced at just over 30,000 drive away. To summarize, I would call it average, with nothing really standing out when compared to the competitors. However, the Astra sedan is also cheaper than the hatch, and it offers some great features to go with its purpose. 
Add to this the composed ride and great fuel efficiency. As well as with their great seven year warranty, the Holden Astra sedan should be attracting some buyers in Australia. Thanks for watching Cartel TV and as always, subscribe, like, share, eat tacos. <laughs>